Today on Rock the Park, revitalizing Florida's coral reef. We're pitching in for some deep sea cleanup. Look Man, at this pile. That's a hole. And learning how to replace coral that's been destroyed. So this is all coral being grown that we're looking at right here. Absolutely. It's an Eco Defenders adventure. And it all starts right now. I'm Jack Stewart. This is the real deal. And I'm Colton Smith. These are mountains! We've been buddies for years. Always in search of the next adventure. Dude, what was that? We share a passion for our national parks and other wild places around the world. Oh my god. Man. Heading off the beaten path. Pushing our limits and experiencing nature's best kept secrets. Here we go! <laughs> it's how we rock the park. The Florida Keys are a world apart, with white sand beaches, spectacular ocean vistas, and a wealth of wildlife everywhere you look. People come here to relax, do some deep sea fishing, and dive on the only living coral barrier reef in the continental US. But there's trouble in paradise. The Florida Keys are great because they're just this stretch of islands off of southern Florida that just seem to go on for miles and miles and miles. And just offshore is the Florida Reef, which is one of the biggest barrier reefs in the world. And honestly, right now, it's not doing so hot. It once was thriving, but since the 1970s, due to pollution, climate change, a variety of things, now only about 10% of that reef is active and living. That's alarming because one quarter of all marine life lives on or near reefs. Schools of fish, sea turtles, and crustaceans make their homes and find food on the reefs. A healthy reef also protects these fragile islands against storm surges from bad weather. So without them, we're not really sure what would happen. And so we're gonna get to learn exactly what's being done to try to revitalize these essential coral reefs. The Florida Keys begin just south of Miami and extend 120 miles out to Key West. The Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary, where efforts are underway to save the reef, encompasses all of it. Yeah, the plan for the next couple of days is to check out the state of the reef and then also find out how we can help repair or restore some of this coral that has unfortunately been dying off. Sadly, people are loving the reef to death by leaving behind tons of garbage. We'll be heading out to open water with a company called Key Dives to help collect some of that debris. So going out on a dive boat, one thing is guaranteed, you're gonna get wet. This bag, it's mesh, everything by the end of the day is gonna be soaked. So a great tip is I always leave a nice pair of warm clothes in the car. That way, I know that I'm gonna be dry at the end of the day. That is smart. One of my biggest pet peeves is being soggy and wet. So having that spare set of clothes is wise. It's huge. Hello. Hey guys, you ready to go clean up the ocean? Yes. So ready. All right, good deal. This cleanup program has already pulled thousands of pounds of debris from these waters. Courtney Benson is the marine conservation coordinator here. The idea of being able to do something that I love while also like helping give back and clean up the reef is such a cool opportunity. Exactly, these are my favorite dives to do because we are going out there and doing good. What are we gonna find down there? So there's a lot of lobster traps, there's a lot of anchors, there's a lot of line from both of those. Uh, that gets wrapped around the coral and entangles the coral. The debris can crush or break off existing parts of the reef and prevent new coral from growing where it lands. You said boat anchors. Right. How does that even work? So we're gonna have lift bags. Um, so we fill these up with air with our alternate. So we can lift up to about 100 pounds, 200 if we have a larger lift bag. And if something found is in good condition, it can be lifted out and used again. Okay, we'll just follow your lead. Sounds great. As we're getting ready to take off, oh man, we notice a Florida manatee calf in the water. They're nicknamed sea cows because they graze on seagrass and can grow bigger than 1,200 pounds. These air-breathing herbivores are curious creatures known to surface around humans. Unfortunately, that puts them at risk of being injured by boats and their motor blades. So we're being very careful as we head out.
We're heading to a depth of about 90 feet, so it takes longer to get down and eventually back up. We need to keep an eye on our air levels at all times. And just like that, we're in another world. Coral is made up of thousands of very tiny creatures called polyps. Each polyp uses calcium carbonate or limestone from the seawater to create a hard skeleton. When thousands of polyps fuse together, they form the structure of a coral reef. I look to my left and see we have company. It's a hawksbill sea turtle named for its narrow pointed beak. They help maintain the reef's health by picking away at sponges and other prey living on the coral. This is how a healthy reef ecosystem looks. But as we swim along, we start to see a reef that is in decline. There's less color here, a result of something called coral bleaching. Coral that's stressed by changes in temperature, light, or nutrients releases algae living in its tissues. Without the algae to help create color, the coral turns white and becomes more susceptible to disease and dying. Debris makes it worse. And we're starting to find it. I start working on a snarl of fishing line that seems to be going on forever. The trick is getting the line loose without damaging the coral. While Colton's working on the line, I spot an anchor and its rope, which goes on and on. You can see how pulling on it could damage the coral. I carefully start cutting and collecting the rope, and Courtney gives me a lift bag for hoisting up the anchor. I'm using air from my tank to inflate the bag so it will act like a balloon and help lighten this load when we ascend to the surface. I'm so focused on getting the anchor off the bottom, I don't even notice what's swimming towards me, but Colton does. <laughs> Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary in about 90 feet of water, helping to clean up debris that's damaging a coral reef. I'm trying to lift a discarded anchor when Colton starts yelling something through his regulator. I'm so focused on the anchor in the bag that I don't even see a shark swimming right behind me. It's a nurse shark, easily identified by its dark color and the whisker-like organs called barbels that hang near its jaw. As sharks go, nurses are pretty laid back and this one just keeps swimming. It's time to head back to the surface. Even with the lift bag, this anchor is still extremely heavy, so we take turns carrying it. Wow, look Man, at this pile. That's a hole. Yeah, you guys did an awesome job for your first cleanup dive. Sweet. Yeah, that's thank you. Deal. I think the most challenging thing for me was trying to get the rope untangled from the coral without damaging the coral itself. And what really got me was swimming, holding onto that anchor. Right, love it, work. Yeah, it took it out of me. Like, I was <laughs> sucking down the air. I had to hand it off to you. So I was like, <laughs> I don't want to run out. But being down there and realizing that we gathered all of this stuff from one site right here. It says a lot about just how much junk is being left behind and why these cleanups are so important. Back on land, the Key Dives team logs what we found and figures out our collection total. 112 pounds. They'll recycle anything that can be saved like the anchor, rope, and wire netting so it can be reused by local and commercial anglers. Meanwhile, we're off to meet another team of eco-defenders at the Moat Marine Laboratory. Keeping the reefs clean is only one part of the equation. We're about to see how another group is doing something really cool, growing and planting coral. Hey, how you doing? Good, Colton. Nice Sarah Hamlin is a coral restoration technician. 
So if we look back 20, 30, 40 years ago, the reefs actually look significantly different. There's a lot more colour on them, a lot more stony coral cover, and they're a lot more beautiful. What you see when you go down to the reefs now is maybe 6% coral cover. It's significantly decreased, and that's through things like storm damage. We've got warmer waters, which bleaches coral, um, and it eventually dies from that. I understand you guys are growing coral to put back out on the reefs? Yeah, we really are. So at Moat Marine Lab, we actually do a process called microfragmentation. So that's what we're going to go through today. So this is all coral being grown that we're looking at right here? Absolutely. We've got 30,000 fragments of this coral on site. Wow. Moat uses tiny fragments of coral that have broken off a reef to seed all these new pieces. The ones in front of us are samples of Elkhorn coral. It was once the most abundant stony coral on the Florida reef. The Elkhorn's antler-like branches create habitat for fish and marine invertebrates like sea stars, clams, and octopus, which is why saving it is so important. We glue them onto these ceramic plugs and we allow them to grow out. And when they reach the full size, we'll actually go out onto the reef and replant them. So we're wow. reseeding the reef, so to speak. If the coral is dying, what's the point of putting more out there. Awesome question. Um, so we also do a lot of research because there is a large disease outbreak happening on the Florida reef track. So we're finding coral that's more resistant to that. And we're also testing at our lab here, coral that is more resilient to higher ocean temperatures and lower pH in the oceans. Wow, so it's, it's putting coral back out there that is more resistant to some of the things that are changing in yeah. the water. So we're trying to give it a fighting chance to actually regrow the reefs that were previously healthy. What you've planted on the reef, have you seen it expand? Absolutely. Right. Depending on how we frag that coral and how we plant it in different arrays. And when it fuses together, within about two years, it's at the same size that, you know, it might take 50 to 100 years naturally to get that large. It's incredible. Do you guys want to go at it as well? Yeah. yeah. Yes. I'd love to see you do it. All right, okay. let's do it. <laughs> So what we're going to do here is the process of microfragging, cutting the coral into small strips. So basically we run our corals through a diamond blade bandsaw. Here we go. Oh no. We're in Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary, where coral reef that's been decimated by climate change and disease is getting a new lease on life. Scientists have come up with a way to grow coral that can survive in today's warmer and more acidic waters. So what we're going to do here is the process of microfragging. So as long as you don't rub the back of the blade, you're fine. You won't cut yourself on it. Here we go. Oh no. Even though Sarah says I won't hurt myself, I'm taking it real slow, slicing the coral into small squares. This cutting, or fragging, stimulates rapid regrowth in the coral at a rate 25 times faster than in nature. So this tiny speck could soon be viable coral. Perfect, dunk it in the water. All right, Colton, it's my time to shine. So now we're gonna mount that on one of our ceramic plugs. Just a dab of glue and a tiny fragment of coral and a future piece of the reef is born. Congratulations. In six months time, here's That's one I prepared incredible. earlier. It's gonna be a full plug, so it's gonna be that big. And this is what we're out planting on the reef. That is unbelievable. So that's going to create a new elkhorn coral. The plugs will be outplanted or transplanted from the nursery to out on the reef, where they'll hopefully fuse together like this to create new structure. So do you guys want to go out there and actually help us outplant some of this coral onto the reef? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, we kind, do. Kind of was hoping you would ask us that question. So yes, that Excellent. would be amazing. Let's grab our dive gear and go then. Before we do the actual outplanting, we'll need to harvest the pieces of coral from Moat's underwater nursery. So essentially, I mean, we're gonna be looking at a giant growing coral forest. Absolutely, yeah, and we call them coral trees as well. So we've got a whole bunch of them out there and you've got coral hanging from them. Um, it's really beautiful. The trees are full of pieces of staghorn coral. Staghorn has antler-like branches and can grow in big, dense groups known as thickets, which create important habitat for all kinds of marine life especially fish. We'll eventually be cable tying small pieces of this staghorn to a reef. So what we'll be looking for when we get out to the nursery is pieces of coral that are about yay big, so we're looking about five, six centimetres. We're going to get our tool, we're going to place it right on the corner here and we're going to snip it. That piece is going to fall off and we're going to take that out onto the reef and have it grow. You want to be safe out here, protect your skin. 
you look a little funny, sure, but it's worth it. It is worth it. We're using a reef safe sunblock so we don't hurt the coral. The nursery is about four miles off the coast where the water flow is better for growing coral. Let's do it. Real toes on the edge, regulator in, big step. It's a quick swim to the nursery in about 15 to 20 feet of water. And when the trees come into view, it looks so cool. They're loaded with staghorn coral. Sarah gives us a quick demo of the fragging process. Like she said, we just find a piece that's long enough, snip it, and let the coral fall to the bottom where we'll collect it later. Now it's my turn. And even though it looks pretty simple, I'm taking my time on the first cut. One down, a couple dozen more to go for each of us. Like the corals in the lab, the process of cutting it actually promotes more growth in the pieces that will remain on these nursery trees and these that will outplant. Our basket is full and it's time to head to the reef to do the planting. We're going to be out planting on what's called a patch reef, an isolated formation between other bigger reefs. We're still a few miles from shore here in about 20 feet of water. The moat team has already pounded in clusters of nails to the reef structure for anchoring the staghorn. Sarah demonstrates how to attach the pieces with a cable tie. It looks simple but the strong current on the reef is making it hard to stay steady. Every time I get close, a wave pushes me off course. I'm starting to wonder if we'll ever be able to pull this off. a reef in the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary, replanting fragments of staghorn coral that have been growing in a nursery. But the current is making it hard to get steady enough to tie them down. But after evening out my buoyancy, it's getting easier to get the work done. The coral will eventually cover these nails and ties and will continue to grow together, creating a whole new section of the reef. Even before we finish up, fish are swimming around the new clusters of staghorn. A great sign and a perfect ending for this adventure. I think what was interesting was working with a current and actually having some moving pieces. It was making sure you had the zip tie lined up and then getting it on the coral and then attaching it to the nail and then getting it cinched tight. I mean, that's like four or five steps there. There were definitely some obstacles, but I feel like we, we got the job done. We certainly got the job done. So this year we've just cracked 20,000 coral as of today, as of what we wow. just did. Wow. It's so amazing to see not just what you guys are doing here, but even local dive shops to work on such a big problem that we're facing. Very much so. I mean, to just come down here for two days, be able to work with you guys and then the local dive shops as well and see what everybody's doing, it leaves you with, honestly, a profound sense of optimism, seeing what's being done to combat this incredibly intimidating problem. And that one day we can come back to that same reef and see it beaming with life. That's a critical part of what we do. So we are trying to bring back that life. We're trying to protect our coastlines. So I can't thank you guys enough for coming out and joining us and helping raise the awareness of the issues that are going on in the reef and how we're working really hard to, to keep that optimism and you know keep the reef growing and keep it healthy. Absolutely. Thank you guys for helping us. One more, one more high yeah. five. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's easy to get bummed out about the current state of the Florida reef, but it's far better to join the eco defenders who are working to fix this reef's problems and save this special ecosystem. And remember, if we can do it, so can you. So the next chance you get, go out and rock the park.
Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave any questions or comments that you have. And please, subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more to come.